Hey everyone, welcome back to this course. So in the last video, we saw how we can install TenStack Query or React Query and also how we can install an ESLint plugin that can help us to monitor and write a better code for our application. Now today we are going really to start using uh, the TenStack Query or React Query. So the first step you have to do is that you have to import a client provider from TenStack Query. So to make sure that this query is available to your own application. Therefore, the best place to place it will be your root of application, so you don't have to add it every time through your app. So this one works like a context API if you are familiar with that. So you have to make it available to your application so you can access it anytime you want. Okay, so I'll come here to my root application. I'm using create a React app, so index.js is the root. So I'll come here and import um, two things. So I need query client and also I need query client provider okay that will provide it to my application make it available so I'll import this from 10 stack query 10 stack slash react query now I can come here and initialize my client my query client and I'll make a new instance of it so I'll call it const I'll call it a uh, query client. You can call it anything you want. And I'll send you query client. Okay, so basically I'm just making a new instance of my query client service uh, that I'm importing from the React query. Now, next thing we have to do is that we have to wrap our whole application with this query client provider. So I'll just remove this. I'll say query client provider. Then put my app inside. And this accepts uh, one property which is called client. And this client will assign this query client that we created right there. So basically all what we are doing here now is that we just create um, a provider, query client provider, and assign this query client here. And that will help us to access this query client through the all application. So that's in place. Now let's go jump into our application. Now we need to import one hook from 10 sec query. So I say import, import, use query from root 10 sec slash react query. Okay. And basically what this hook will do for us, it will help us to fetch data from any API. And not only that, it will help us to also have access to all stages like loading, error, and many other things we'll see later as well. So it's not only help us to fetch, but also help us to handle all related uh, manipulations we do when we are fetching an API. And we'll see that in, in this example. Okay, now this use query, we can, of course, it's a hook, so we have to go inside our function component. So it gives us back an object, okay? We should see later what it contains. So use query, and use query accepts an object as a parameter as well, okay? So there are a few properties uh, you can pass here. We'll start with simple ones, which are mandatory. And in future incoming videos, we'll see more options depending on their usage as well. So the first most important one, of course, is the one that will help us to fetch the API itself. So just remember, use query is not a replacement of fetch or Axios uh, functionalities. It doesn't replace them. It just helps us to manipulate whatever is around it, okay? like data management, state management, error validation, and so on, and much more than that. So just remember this, use query, it doesn't really replace the functionality of like Axios or Fetch, okay? So the first property is called uh, query fn, and here you can pass your function that will help you uh, to fetch your API, okay? So for now, I'll do this. So it will be an arrow function, and I'll use the JSON placeholder to get uh, my API call. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it there. Okay, and yeah, and that's it. Okay, now all what we're doing here, we're saying, okay, this query will be helping me to fetch a list of to do's. And here I'm just getting one. So I'll remove that because I want the whole list. Now, this is the first parameter which helps you to actually do the API call and, uh, and it will manage for you behind the scene. The second uh, parameter, which is a very important one, and you have to remember this, 
it's called query key and query key basically is like an identifier like an id thing that you use in your html but this one is an identifier for your query itself for your api call that you're doing this time okay and you'll go in more details later and this query key for now we'll just give it a string and you can name your this api call this functionality whatever you want i'll call it to do's for now okay so i'll save this and what we can do is for example let's try to access our query uh, data how we can access data and display it on our screen so we said the query gave us back uh, many properties i will do destruction here actually and access only things i need i will do data okay and i will come here and i will just and comment my list and i'll pass data down there save it go to my application and you can see it's working okay so i can see my full list now rendering for my api which is amazing okay we didn't use a state we didn't use use effect nothing okay let's go back to this query key uh, property that we pass our use query and let me add some more explanation for now and later when we go into more scenarios and mutation and caching you'll have a really better understanding why it is important, okay? So basically the query key, it helps the React Guido tensor query to do caching, okay? It automatically caches the data based on the query key, okay? Based on the special naming that you give to your query, okay? If another component, for example, in your application requested the same data, okay, with the same query key, the React query will not make another API call, okay? We'll just use the cache data instead of making a new network request, okay? Which is really, really good, right? Also, the other benefit of um, the query key is that you can easily invalidate and refetch your queries based on their keys, okay? Whenever, when you know data may have changed. We'll see later also how we will do that as well. The other thing is by standardizing your query key across your application, you can more easily monitor and manage data fetches and see exactly what data is being requested and how often, okay? And this may sound not a lot of things, but trust me, it's so simple and easy. And in next video, we will see how we can have a dev tool that will help us to monitor all these calls and fetching and validating. So see you in the next video.